Why, hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another delightful little video presentation which I hope you will enjoy of course. We're going to be looking at a lovely little delightful reptile today. The actual gorgeous and stunning little reptile we're going to be looking at is the red-eyed crocodile skink which also has the Latin or binominal name of Tribolontius gracilis. I think that's how you pronounce it, Tribolontius gracilis. It's a beautiful species of reptile which I also do actually hope to own in the future and I've actually seen in real life in captivity. They are lovely little animals. I apologise if this video is, uh, what should I say, a little bit shorter than usual but I'll try and make it as long as possible without faffing. And I'm sorry if my voice sounds a bit laboured, it's because I'm a little bit hyper at the moment so a bit of a sugar rush. Here we got a lovely beautiful image of a red-eyed crocodile skink perched upon a log. But the beautiful red-eyed crocodile skink is native to Indonesia and New Guinea. So its climate would be an area of quite high humidity, well quite high humidity would be generally. And this is often actually replicated in captivity within our vivariums or terrariums, whatever you want to call them. The red-eyed crocodile skink also reaches an adult size of about 18 to 20 centimetres, so it's not really a large reptile species as it goes. And they're actually smart, slightly smaller than some one of my actual pets, which is a very commonly kept reptile in captivity by the name of the bearded dragon or Pagana viticeps is its binominal or Latin name. They are lovely little animals but they are far too common in the UK currently. So I advise you if you do actually are watching this video and you own a bearded dragon, do not breed them. But moving on, crocodile skinks also reach sexual maturity within three to four years so it actually does take a quite a fair while for a species that I do believe doesn't give birth to a great deal of offspring, well eggs, they don't lay a great deal of eggs I should say, and they also have a lifespan of, about, of roughly 12 to 15 years, so quite long lived to be honest. There's a cheeky little crocodile skink hiding within its enclosure I'm guessing, looking a bit mortified at seeing the camera lens pointing towards it. A crocodile skinks generally prefer a damp and humid environment with plenty of locations in which to hide and be both elusive and reclusive within. I've, like, I've attended a college for, for four years and I'm doing an animal management foundation degree and they actually house a beautiful red eye crocodile skink on site within the college and honestly I can tell you in about four years of studying I've actually probably seen this red eye crocodile skink about two or three times and this is at once only you actually looking for it in its enclosure like turning over like some of the substrate and stuff. The best sort of environment for a red eye crocodile skink is actually an environment in which they can't be seen. They like to be sheltered and they do not like really to be in the open. They also require a humidity level at about 80 or to 95%. So that's the required level of humidity if you were keeping one of these lovely little animals. Although it can vary sometimes. Well this is actually a truly beautiful image of a red-eyed crocodile skink. Very very zoomed in. So we can see all of its lovely physical features. Red-eyed crocodile skink, as obviously its name goes, is actually an appearance wise. It more resembles actually an armoured species like small crocodile than an actual skink. I've held and like seen skinks such as I think they're Bee, but not beaver skinks, berber skinks, our uh, pink pink ton skinks and blue ton skinks I've held and handled. And they have like a sort of smooth like feel to them, much like much like similar to holding many different species of snakes, such as corn snakes and uh royal pythons and some other different species. Yeah, they have like a soft, smooth feel, but I'm imagining I've not actually held a red eye crocodile skink, but if it was the whole one, imagine it would have a really hard armoured appearance. Which does make sense when you look at actually its physical features and the scales. Here are some big lovely armoured dench facts for you ladies and gentlemen to indulge in. I just wanted really an excuse to include the word dench in this video presentation just because that armoured skink, well that red-eyed crocodile skink perched upon the wood on the right in this picture definitely looks pretty dench and pretty menacing although he's only a little fella. Well crocodile skinks as I said before only have a lifespan of about 12 to 15 years that makes them quite a well long lived lizard species. Crocodile skinks are actually capable of emitting vocalisations when, whenever they are startled and they can even like play possum by playing dead if, uh, if the situation actually arises so it is a quite a useful defensive measure. Crocodile skinks are generally shy little creatures but they will bite if they actually have to but this is quite rare. There are actually eight documented species of red-eyed crocodile skink and it's also known as the bush crocodile which is quite a cool little name. Here we've got another beautiful lovely little red-eyed crocodile skink image but moving on. Dietary wise crocodile skinks are insectivores so if you want to feed them gut loaded insects and invertebrates 
to give them like the maximum amount of nutritional value. Is for example, I feed my bearded dragons, mealworms, and locusts generally, and I feel feed my leopard geckos crickets. But I try and feed the invertebrates before feeding them, so there's extra nutrition within the diet. Prey items that and live food, which crocodile skinks will feed upon, can be little insects and invertebrates such as earthworms, silkworms, worm larvae or larval. I think it's larvae, but I'm useless at pronouncing that word. Mealworms. Mealworm beetles, which my bearded dragons also like eating, and crickets, but you get like brown and black crickets, and I imagine they could probably eat locusts as well, depending on what size uh, variant you use. The live food should really be either dusted or coated with a vitamin D3 supplement before feeding to maximise calcium and vitamin intake. This is especially useful, uh, especially no, useful. This is actually essential at an early age for most reptile species for good bone development and uh, growth rate. Also, use the basket, basket areas within the enclosure wisely and make sure you have a temperature gradient. And lighting and temperatures should be at about 86 degrees Fahrenheit because if the temperature is too high, the crocodile skink will generally become very stressed. Thought we'd finish off with this beautiful, lovely little image of a beautiful and most striking crocodile skink. And this is truly a fantastic species of reptile. I actually, in the future, I keep saying to myself when I actually have a decent amount of funds that I'm going to buy one of these lovely little creatures. And I might even attempt to breed them because they're not actually that commonly bred in captivity. As always though, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this little presentation. And I hope you find this lovely species interesting and I hope it further increases your knowledge on this certain species. And it makes, makes you want to study it in the future. Feel free to comment and like the video if you wish. And join the Raptor Pack today by subscribing. And have a pleasant day wherever you are in the world currently viewing this video. And goodbye for now.